Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and love it or hate it, there is no denying that AI is becoming more and more a part of our daily life, and especially in the world of programmers. So we've had some uh, tools that have been AI first. These are tools that are basically built around the concept of having uh, AI code assistance agents built into them. And one of the biggest players in this space is Cursor. Now, I did a video about this one in the past on the channel. They're definitely one of the most prominent players in this space, and they have done extremely well for themselves, as we will see in just a minute. So this is a code editor built entirely around AI integration. So if you're not looking for a virtual code assistance or you don't want uh, AGNic uh, refactoring tools, that kind of stuff, not the one that you want. But if you are all about AI, Cursor has been one of the best players in this space and it has definitely uh, rewarded them in terms of the valuation of their company. The other player in this space, and uh, I also covered them on the channel as well, but when I covered them, they were called Codium and it was much more clear about what coding was all about, but the same basic concept. This is uh, AI tightly integrated into the IDE tooling. And this one, uh, again, is apparently for windsurfers that code. Now, they're not a big demographic, I see, again, I don't know why they rebranded. Uh, but same basic premise as what we're dealing with uh, when we were talking about cursor, cursor and windsurf. You may actually even look at the, the screenshots here and think, huh, they look awfully similar. Well, there is a very good reason for that, and we will get back to that in just a second. But first, a little bit of a showcase of their success and relevance in the world. First, we'll talk about Cursor. Now, this was just earlier this month. So earlier in May, they were valued at $9 billion as investors injected $900 million in cash into this company. That is kind of insane. And I also think that uh, they may regret that. I'm not 100% certain, but uh, some things have just changed that may make that valuation seem a little steep. And, and I, you know what, I don't even know what money is anymore. When I was young, I remember a million dollars seeming like this insurmountable stuff. Now we toss around billions like it's popcorn. So uh, anyways, very successful company in that regard. So any sphere, the maker of Cursor were valued at $900 million just earlier this, sorry, given $900 million to value them at $9 billion. And on top of that, we had Windsurf was just uh, agreed to be bought by OpenAI. Yeah, that OpenAI uh, for $3 billion. And that was also earlier in May. So that was May the 6th that that announcement came through. So there is big money in this space. Now, when I talked about both of those products, I said they, they probably look awfully familiar to you. And there is a very good reason for that. And that is this, Visual Studio Code. So Visual Studio Code is what both of them are made out of. These are both uh, forks of Visual Studio Code. And they've kind of gone in their own direction, added their own functionality, basically deep down into the guts. And this actually has created a bit of a problem for Visual Studio Code because they want to add all of this AI crap too. You'll notice right here, this is the Visual Studio Code homepage and AI is very prominent. On top of that, they just added agent mode into Visual Studio Code. They integrated with Copilot on the back end. And obviously they wanted to monetize Visual Studio Code for AI. And they wanted to make it so that you'd subscribe for Copilot to work with Visual Studio Code, et cetera. Now, the problem with this is uh, the other two companies, because they are building it right into the guts as opposed to doing it as an extensions, uh, were basically uh, eating their lunch. So that's how Cursor and uh, Codium or um, Windsurf now uh, managed to be as successful as they were. That they basically they took the foundations of Visual Studio Code, and then they they kind of um, rebuilt the guts to have this own. And and that meant that not necessarily the marketplace wasn't consistent. It wasn't a single code base or anything like that. They were full functioning forks. And they were obviously, one was valued at $9 billion and the other one was bought at $3 billion just earlier this month. So you get an idea how successful they were with that. Well, if you've looked at Visual Studio Code's recent releases, they've been building more and more and more of the functionality into the gut. So if you do not like AI at all, this world hates you because you don't have a choice. Basically, this is being built in at the fundamental levels. Hell, they built Copilot into Notepad. So you got an idea of what their priorities are. Well, why are we talking about two forks of Visual Studio Code and then Visual Studio Code itself today. Well, there was a pretty massive announcement yesterday, which happened to be a holiday here in Canada, which is why you're hearing about it on a Tuesday instead, is that Visual Studio Code just open sourced their AI editor. So the key is basically the, the GitHub chat extension, the GitHub Copilot chat extension is going to be completely open source under the MIT license. Uh, and then on top of that, they will uh, refactor the relevant components of the extension into the Visual Studio Core. 
So that means Visual Studio is open sourcing the client side portions of their AI. So it's basically the, the secret sauce that's making cursor work and uh, windsurf work. Uh, and then of course, powered the copilot, um, the GitHub copilot chat extension. Well, that is all being open sourced under the MIT license model. So you can actually look into and see how things are implemented. Uh, and then they've got a bit of an explanation of where they're going. Again, something that some of you may dread is this part. It is going to be built into Visual Studio Core. So this is becoming core functionality to Visual Studio. This is not gonna be an extension. This is not going to be something that you can ignore anymore. It's going to be part of Visual Studio Code. So if you do not like AI integration, you're not gonna like that part. So why did they do this? So over the last few months, we've observed shifts in AI development that motivated us to transition our AI development in Visual Studio Code from closed to open source. First off, lar large language models have significantly improved, mitigating the need for secret sauce prompting strategies. In some ways, that means the, the special stuff that made AI integration special isn't so special anymore. Uh, the popular and effective UX treatments for AI interactions are now, now common across all editors, basically meaning that the keystrokes and the format and the process and, and the basic go of how you actually use these tools is the same across Windsurf, Cursor, Visual Studio Code, and other tools out there. Um, we want to enable the community to refine and build on these common UI elements by making them available in stable open code base. Uh, an ecosystem of open source AI tools and Visual Studio Code extensions has emerged. We want to make it easier for these extension authors to build, debug, and test their extensions. This is especially challenging today without access to the source code in the Copilot chat extension. Uh, we've gotten a lot of questions about the data that is collected by AI editors. Open sourcing the Copilot chat extensions enables you to see the data we collect, increasing the transparency. And malicious actors are increasingly targeting AI developer tools throughout Visual Studio Code's history as open source software community issues and PRs have helped us to find and fix security issues. Now, there should be another bullet point here, and it should be because windsurfing and cursor are doing so well, but they don't mention that part. So where are they going with this one? Uh, in the coming weeks, we will uh, work to open source the code in the GitHub Copilot chat extension and refactor AI features from the extension into the Visual Studio Code core. Our core priorities remain intact, delivering great performance, powerful extensi extensibility, and an intuitive, beautiful user interface. Open source works best when communities build around a stable shared foundation. Again, that is them not liking the forking that is going on, all these people make forks of Visual Studio Code instead of contributing to Visual Studio Code. Uh, thus, our goal is to make contributing AI features as simple as contributing to any part of Visual Studio Code. Uh, the stochastic nature of large language models makes it especially challenging to test AI features and prompt changes. Uh, to ease this, we will also make our prompt test infrastructure open source to ensure the community uh, pull requests can build and pass tests. As usual, you can follow along on our iteration plan. We provide more information on this work. We will also keep our fact up to date uh, with answers to questions from the community. Uh, we welcome your feedback as we bring this vision to life. We're excited to shape uh, the future of development as an open source AI editor, and we hope you'll join us on your journey to build this in the open. So the winners here, uh, if you are building tools that are still in Visual Studio Code, uh, you should have tighter integration into this AI stuff. So if you are doing AI tooling in the marketplace in Visual Studio Code itself, you should be able to do more because it's gonna be built into the core. The losers here are people that hate AI in their tools and potentially Cursor and Windsurf. I'm curious what you think on that one. Do you think that those two companies are going to suffer or do they offer enough beyond what they, they how they differentiate themselves from Visual Studio that it's justified for them to be complete forks? I'm curious what you think on that one. By the way, in the world of open source, one other quick announcement came from Microsoft as well at the same event, and that was this. They uh, open source the Windows subsystems for Linux or WSL. Uh, it is now open source as well. So. Um, yeah, that one, I, there's not really much more to say. Just WSL is open source and that's eh, pretty cool. So let me know what you think. Do you think the days of Cursor and Windsurf are numbered? Uh, do you resent the encroachment of AI into your uh, otherwise pristine tools? Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.